Welcome back uh, again. It's Lee Newman. Got with me Mark Mullins from Home Depot. And on this winterization stuff, he brought a few items along for you to take a look at. And there's many, many more on the market that I'm sure that they have. Uh, Mark is, uh, I'm sure, an expert in all of this stuff. So he came to give me a hand. I'll learn from it. You'll learn from it. Good morning, Mark. Good morning, Lee. Thank Happy you for having us. Thank you very much. Thanks uh, for letting us come over. Mark, you're the assistant manager and merchandising manager at a Home Depot. I am. And these are some of the things here. We've got two, four, six, seven, looks like seven items that you brought along that will help us uh, insulating our homes. Yes, sir. Okay. And some of these are year-round. Some of them are exactly. specifically for wintertime. So, Mark, I'd like for you to start here, if you don't mind, and, and explain to us what you have, and let's move along item for okay. item. And if I have questions... Uh, I'll stop you. There you go. Lee, I'll be glad to. What we've got here is a new product for us. It's called Attic Cat. Uh, it's an expanding blown-in insulation, and uh, what it does is it, it will expand to 16 times uh, the normal cellulose insulation that you might have in your attic. Uh, you can blow it in different depths, and it covers different square footages. Uh, it's a great product to add on top of any attic insulation that you have. So uh, whatever you've got up there, whether it's batten or whatever it is, you just blow this right you, on you top of it? You can blow this on top of it, and it'll give you the coverage and, and the insulation quality that you need. And that'd fill in some of the gaps, I guess, between that where you've laid it in, too. Exactly. Sure. And one of the things that makes this nice about uh, the product for the homeowner is you're not itching when you get through. Uh, I'm going to get it in there, though. <laughs> I mean, I got this stuff piled out there, but I can't get up there and spread all that stuff If around. you'll, uh, when you come down to the Home Depot and you buy the attic cat insulation for or from us, we'll provide you with the blower that puts it up in is there. Is there a you. minimum amount that I have to buy or is it just? No sir. Uh, the only thing is that we require a $300 deposit for the blower itself. Be just sure to make sure it, it, back make sure it comes back. But the rental on it is free uh, up for up to 24 hours which should give you enough time to to insulate anything that you need to insulate. Okay now in blowing this stuff up in the attic of course a lot of places you're going to have openings that's going to go down through the walls too. So if this stuff settles down Normally, if you've got it in the walls, it has settled over a period of time. Right. This will just kind of fill in below that, too, won't it? That fills in below it, and, and uh, well, like you said earlier, it'll, it'll fill up and, and encompass any uh, cracks or crevices that you have. Okay, good item. Take advantage yeah. of it, folks. Now, here's something, Mark, that I got at my house on two doors, mm -hmm. and it works. Hey, it they're really great. It does. They're great. Uh, this is what's called the uh, double draft stop, and all you do is you take it, and uh, we'll pull it out of the package here. But you can cut it to the size that you need. It's got a little zipper in here where you can pull it out. And all these come in a 36 inch? Uh... They come in a 36 inch. Okay. But obviously, and, and as you know, a lot some doors are shorter than that. But what you do is you just want to cut it to the size you need. You slide it back down in there. You zip it up. And then you can slide this under the door itself and it'll slide and move with the door as it opens and closes and it'll kill your drafts. A lot of people have towels. Yeah, you know, they, don't, they don't go back when you close the door. That's right, yeah. but this follows the track of the door and uh, it'll stop that draft. And I'm sure they've seen it advertised on television There's several manufacturers of it, but you can buy that out at the Home Depot. Yes, sir. And it does work. I promise you it does work. Got All that. right. Uh, now, around the county, Troop County, a lot of people have wells. Exactly. And you've got a well house, you've got a pump, and that's, that's, that's going to freeze it's when it gets freeze. really, really cold. So you've got something here that'll, that'll help out with that. This is probably about the simplest solution that you can buy. Uh, you can get the, uh, we've got a Phillips 250-watt heat, heat light. Uh, we've got a clamp on, which will just clamp right to whatever you want it to clamp to if you're in, your, in your pump house. You'll just put this on and just kind of shine it down, right down on your well pump itself. It'll, it'll maintain a constant temperature in there and uh, keep your pump from freezing. This, uh, and this is the heat light, but what, uh, what watt is this? That's a 250 watt. 250 watt. Yes, sir. That'll heat it up pretty good. Now, be sure that you don't have any papers or insulation or stuff inside that right. uh, pump house that can catch on fire because this thing will get hot enough and it will cause a fire. And I bet that would burn you too if that'll you, burn you to touch. If you It'll get put warm your hand to burn on it. you up. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And then we've got uh, a similarity here of a pipe, uh, I suppose. Yes, Looks sir. like maybe a one inch, yes, three sir. quarter, one inch. 
This is easy to install. You can cut it with a pair of scissors um, down in your crawl space or either in your, uh, some people even have plumbing up in their attic. Yeah. And I would recommend that you, uh, you know, that you put this around any pipes that you have that are not insulated as, as of yet. And uh, this is just a real simple solution to keep those pipes from freezing. And that does open up so that you can, uh, yes, you can slide it around the pipe. We aren't saying you've got to take the pipes loose and slide it on yeah. there. You can open it, it opens up. up. You can put it around it. And then and uh, when you want to uh, secure it, just take a little bit of electrical tape. Yep. Tape it up and that'll hold it tight. Or duct tape and everybody's duct got tape. duct tape. Everybody's got duct tape, so use a little duct tape. All right. Mark, uh, I had a conversation with you because, you know, I'm not real smart <laughs> uh, about this. And it says, when the insulation can shrink film insulates. And I thought maybe you put it on the pane and you heated it and it adhered to the pane. Well, that's how dumb I was because, uh, and he kept saying, well, I said, how does it really work? How? He said, well, yeah, it gives you an air gap. Well, no, it don't if it adheres to the glass. So now tell them what you had to tell me <laughs> for education purposes. What you want to do is this comes in, uh, this is actually 42 inches wide by 60, uh, 62 inches long. And you can cut it to fit your window. Let's just pretend that this is a window. You want to adhere it. You want to cut it to the size. And then when you, when you blow it with the, the hair dryer to heat it up, It'll stick to this and then it'll tighten up to create an air gap between the pane of window and the frame. But you want to stick it to the frame. And then when you apply the heat to it, it'll stretch tight and it'll give you the air gap, much like a double insulated window. So if you've got the, the panes inside that window and you put this over the outsides, if the putty is missing in between some of those glass panes or if they're uninsulated glass panes, that, that eliminates that problem. You that don't eliminates get the air that problem. There. That doesn't hurt you a bit. I'll go ahead and take it out of here and let everybody see what we got. All right, it's a pretty easy solution. Now, I see people all the time with plastic, you know, stretched over the outsides. And yes, they kind of staple it or nail it around the outside yes, of the sir. window. And this is what they're trying to achieve. This is what they're trying to achieve. And Frost King gives you a, uh, as you can see, this rolls out and it just sticks. It'll stick to the window. And then when you stick this plastic on there and you heat it, it'll, it'll uh, contract. Oh, by the way, Philip, that won't ever come off, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that'll give you the, the insulation quality that you need, and it'll help you with any drafts coming out of those older windows. But this is just out. one big piece, is, is that correct? And, yes, uh, sir, but you can cut it to any size. Okay, so you just cut off what you got to have around there with scissors or razor knife, whatever, exactly. pocket knife, and... Uh, and fit it, let's, fit it right through. It just fits up here like this. And then and when you heat it, when you heat it, it draws it, it draws up, draws tight, and it'll give you that tight seal that you're looking for. And you can't really tell it's on there. You can't tell it's on there. Great idea. Okay. All right, Mark, that's good. Thank you. Yes, sir. Now, air conditioners. Last uh, but not least. They give you a lot of cool air in the wintertime, don't they? Yes, sir, they <laughs> will. But that'll help. Yes, sir, it will. Uh, this is made for an 18 inch by 27 inch uh, air conditioning unit. I don't know if you can see here, but a lot of folks will uh, leave the air conditioning units hanging through the, through the window in the winter time. This is just something that covers it open, over to keep the, the wind from coming through that. Yeah, because most of those cases have little uh, louver things in them and that wind can go right in there and there's nothing to stop it from going into the house. Yep. Yep. Uh, so. That's something that I've, I've not seen used before, and it, it makes a lot of sense that it would work fine. Yep. It'll just, you go outside, you slide it right over your air conditioning unit, and uh, you got your little, you got your little uh, uh, okay, straps here. Hooks over. Hooks over, and there you go. All right. Just keeps that draft out. Well, that's a good idea, too. Looks like a good product that would work. Yes, sir. Uh, in addition to the things that Mark has brought here uh, for us to look at this morning, some of the things that people worry about is the faucets on the outside of the house, and they do make a boot. I call it a boot. It's yes, a sir. glove that goes over that thing that keeps the, that spigot, faucet, whatever you want to call it, from yes, freezing because it's exposed all the time. But they do make what they call frost-proof fixtures for that. Yes, sir. 
But I don't think they work very well, do they? They don't work as well as just putting the, uh, the foam boot over. Uh, we sell those down at the Home Depot for $1.98. Now, you can still hook a hose on that? You can take it's easy. You oh, can you take, take it, it off right and off and put it right on. And one of the worst things I understand, if you want that thing to freeze, is to leave a hose pipe hooked up to it. That is correct. Uh, because water will normally lay in that hose, and, and pretty soon you've got a, a busted hose bib on the outside. That's right. All right. Mark, being the expert you are, what are some of the other items or what are some of the other tips that you can give us or tell the viewing audience of ways, and honestly, to provide, keep them from having a lot of problems in the wintertime? Because you get a busted pipe. It, it's terrible. Uh, we have a product there uh, at the Home Depot, and it's great. It's called Great Stuff. comes in a, a, a big orange can, and I walked right out and forgot it. I was going to bring that with me. But it's an expandable foam. Uh, you would use that uh, anywhere where you have a hole or a gap uh, in between inside and outside. All right, but you want to buy it when you're going to use it because I got three cans at home that I've had for two or three years and I right. got all three of them out yesterday to try to use some of them and they wouldn't work. Right. Does that stuff harden in there or what happens to it that it uh, won't spray? If you, when you're using the can, when you get through with it, if you'll turn it upside down and let it blow, it'll clean itself out, it'll clean the tubes out, and, you, and it's reusable after that. Okay, but I would recommend that you buy it, you know, the, a day or two before you're going to use it. Then you come out and you start using it, and, and uh, your problem is solved from there. There you go. Okay. The uh, thing is, we want to make sure that we're letting our faucets, if it's going to be extremely cold inside the house, you just want to let your faucets drip just a little bit, just a couple of little drips. Yeah. Uh, doesn't cost a lot of money to do that, but it can save you a lot of money in the long run. Oh, good Lord. You get to, you know, 10, 15, 30 degrees, and you're trying to fix a broken pipe. Just a little bit of money that it costs you to run that water dripping. That's it, exactly it, it's right. It's nothing. Basements. A lot of folks have basements. And in the basements, a lot of times they're unfinished. Yes, sir. And most of the basements have water pipes running through those things. Yes, sir. So this... This. Would take care of a lot of that problem down there. Yes, sir. Uh, the other thing is, you know, have a little heat down there, but a lot of folks ha do not have the ducts running down into right. those things. So we got exposed water pipes. We can't get this on them. What else can we do? We want to make sure that we insulate, and you don't necessarily use our attic cat, but we have R19 and R13 roll and bat insulation mm -hmm. that, we can, uh, that you can install in there that will give you uh, some insulation quality and, and just kind of maintain a constant temperature down in that basement. Uh, the great stuff around any penetrations that you have, keeping any drafts out, uh, that's gonna gonna help. Um, and like you said, just if you got a small heater that you can put down there, just to keep the chill off. Yeah, a basement. Uh, I guess if it's enclosed, so you don't get a draft coming into it, so it would certainly stay a little bit warmer, I would think, than the outside right. air, uh, but not a lot warmer. You're still gonna get some busted pipes. Mark Mullins, Home Depot, go on out and take a look at the things that they've got. Any of the other hardware stores certainly have somebody that will help you uh, to pick the items that you need. If you still can't get this thing up, go to your next door neighbor, tell them you need some help getting winterized. I'm Lee Newman, Mark Mullins. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Kirby, and this is Tina Drews and Baxter from Grange Veterinary Hospital. We have another winter pet care tip for your pet. During the winter, it is very important to remember heartworm and fleet prevention. Heartworms replicate at 55 degrees Fahrenheit, so in the south, on warm winter days, your pet can be exposed. So please do not forget this this winter time. If you have any questions, please, please feel free to come by and see us. Thank you.